RC Explorer about the best speed. It's growing the bars in more than one crash at the time. This is the new F3 FC Tricopter frame. It features many things like an F3 processor capable of many awesome things. You now have access to three URTs where you can connect SBUS receivers, GPSs, OSDs, telemetry, and all kinds of good stuff. You also have an I2C bus where you can connect stuff like a magnetometer and a CAN bus for future expandability. Perfectly in the center of the frame we find an MPU 6000. This gyro and accelerometer chip is the least sensitive to vibrations out of the whole family. It's connected through SPI which means it's 8 times faster than an I2C connected gyro. This frame has built-in power distribution, so no need for a second frame. This makes building the tricopter much easier than before because you don't have to fiddle around with the wires that are going everywhere and it's awkward. But now it's super clean and super easy. Even the ESC and servo wires are soldered straight to the board. This makes it cleaner and also easier to build. Since we have power flowing on the board, we could integrate a current sensor. This is huge, as you now know exactly how many milliamps you've drawn out of the pack. And you can send this down through telemetry to your radio. Mmm, look how clean that is. To supply voltage to all of this, we've integrated a 3 amp switching BEC. This has plenty of power to power your servos and like a thousand LEDs. Not, not actually a thousand, like 50. But still, that's quite a lot. And it's super efficient. And you can set it between different voltages. 5, 6 or 8 volts, depending on what kind of servo you're running. But wait, there's more. It also has a built-in pressure sensor. A high quality one, not one of those cheap things. Both the BEC and the pressure sensor is mounted inside of the front spacer. This is to keep airflow away from the pressure sensor and also protect the BEC. Those were the highlights of this board. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect things to the board, soldering stuff and all that. So let's get started. Let's solder the pin header. Flip the board over so you have the component side down. Plop the pin header in like this. It should be almost impossible to solder this on the wrong side because there's two less pins on one side. Flip the board over again and start soldering the pads. Sorry for blocking the light in this shot, but you'll get the point. Use a high wattage soldering station. Set the temperature at 280 to 300 degrees Celsius and use 6040 solder. That should give you a result close to this. Next we're gonna solder this little three pin guy. Pay attention now. This is gonna go on the component side, like this not on the other side. It's there to prevent the boom from sliding forward into your pins and shorting stuff out. So it's very important that you do this right. This is how it's supposed to look when you're done. Next we're gonna solder on this little five volt beeper. It's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just plop it in there, make sure that the positive is against the positive, and then flip the board over and solder it. After you're done, if the buzzer beep all the time, that means that you have a short between the buzzer negative and the power pads negative. So just remove that little thing and you should be good. An alternative way to mount the beeper is to bend the pins and then shove it in there from the side. This way it doesn't take up any space on the top of the board. The built-in switching BEC has a selectable voltage output. And on this build I'm going to use 6 volt because that gives me a little bit more torque and speed on the servo. The standard is 5 volt but if you want a different voltage all you have to do is bridge those pads. On this board there's also two other selectors for voltage. This one sets the URT1 output voltage. You can select between 5V and 3.3V. If you're using a Spectrum satellite receiver it's very important that you don't power it with 5V but select 3.3V. This little selector here is for the rest of the URTs and the two PVM channels. If you select that 8 volt output from the built-in BEC, the selector will let you use this low 5 volt regulator. This is so you can power very voltage sensitive URT devices while still using a high voltage servo. Do not draw too much current through this one though. It does not deliver more than like 200 milliamps. So no powering LEDs or anything then. All right, let's plug in the receiver. We'll start with the PPM. It's very easy. You just plug it into PVM channel six here. The signal pin is located closest to the board, so mount it with the ground up and the signal down. That was pretty easy. Let's plug in a serial RX receiver. Here on the back you can see the URT pinout. So minus, plus, RX and TX. And the one we're interested in is plus, minus and RX. The URT1 pins are located closest to the board, and that's where we're going to plug the receiver into. The negative lead should point towards the I2C connectors and the signal towards the other end. Just plug it in and you're done. While we're at it, we can plug in the smart port telemetry wire. 
just connect it to the TX pin on URT2 and you're done. That's it for the receivers. I thought I would show you some other ports while I'm at it. This is the I2C connections where you can plug in stuff like a magnetometer and stuff. All the way on the other side is the CAN bus. It's marked with an H and an L. And just behind there, there's a pin called LED. This is where you plug in those RGB programmable LEDs that are so awesome. Next to that you have PVM6. This is where you plug in the PPM receiver. And then next to that you have PVM5. If you go to the F3FC product page, there's some pictures showing all of this layout as well. And very last, on the front of the board there's a pad called RAW. This will give you access to the raw battery voltage for powering stuff like an FPV transmitter or something. Lastly, this is how you plug in all the power wires. Your battery input power is soldered on here, plus and minus. That goes through the current sensor and then is connected to all positive and all negatives on the board. This is where the back ESC power wires are connected, plus and minus. The right and left power EEC wires come out of the boom and then connect to plus on one side and negative on the other side. Then the boxes that have the signal pads is where you should solder in the signals to those ESCs. Same with the servo wire and the servo feedback wire. And this is how it's going to look when it's done. You can see exactly how I did this in the build video for the Tricopter version 4. That was it for this video. Be sure to check out the TriFlight setup guide so you can set up this board for your Tricopter. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.